I guess uh, we're able to start. And um, Your Excellency Ambassador, professors, Vice Minister, students, and all people of goodwill. Let me introduce myself. My name is Simonas. arrived from far, far away from Northern Lithuania to be here with you. I'm very glad that uh, together with me came uh, students from uh, Kurshene. Hi, guys. Um, so <clears throat> today is a very important day, and I was asked uh, to, to moderate this discussion, which will be, I'm pretty sure, promising um, and very, very important for a young generation. Uh, this month, this very month, we uh, celebrate 100th anniversary of relationship between Japan and Lithuania. And uh, usually countries recognize each other and uh, that's what we call relationship between countries. Sometimes our relationship grows and it becomes a partnership. And seldom, not often, partnership comes uh, to a next level like a strategic partnership. That's what we have between Lithuania and Japan, and I'm very, very glad that uh, this strategic partnership we may call a friendship. And uh, for this friendship, we uh, celebrate 100th anniversary. Uh, it means that we share common values, uh, mutual understanding, and while we're talking about uh, Japan and Lithuania, we can't exclude one very, very important person. I guess you all know what I'm talking about. It's a Japanese diplomat vice consul that lived in Kaunas for a short period in 1939, 1940, and became world famous uh, for what he had done during the summer 1940. Chuna Sugihara. Chuna Sugihara, I call him multinational hero. For me, he is a hero uh, as for Lithuanian, and I'm pretty sure that uh, Sugihara is a hero for Japan too. So, um, this year brought us very, very tragic events. Uh, very tragic events, and uh, on February 24, because of Russian aggression, the war began in Ukraine territory. And um, for me as a historian, sometimes it seems that we never learn from historical mistakes. Um, that's why we gathered here and we will try to make a short notice for young generation. And I'm very glad and I will try to introduce our participants. Just wanted to check, but I know everyone. So, um, His Excellency Ambassador of Japan in Lithuania, Tetsuo Saki. <laughs> Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs of Republic of Lithuania, Gideus Meilunas. <laughs> Professor of Vilnius University, uh, Mindaugas Kvetkauskas. and Professor of Vitotas Magdus University and representative of Sugihara Foundation Diplomats for Life, Egidius Aleksandravičius. We have a time which is, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, and Professor uh, Inaba, uh, Chiharu Inaba from Major University. Hi. <laughs> My apologies, uh, Professor Naba. You simply uh, just missed the uh, screen. Um, yes. Thank you. And um, the time is precious, and therefore uh, we have a limited time. And I would like to ask each of you uh, to to keep ten minutes speech. Do your best. So uh, please, uh, Professor Alexandrovichus. Uh, your message to young generation. Hello to everybody. I don't know which language to choose now to, to speak. English? 
Uh, I prepared it in Lithuanian and uh, for the translators, but uh, yes, yes, because I don't speak Japanese, it means that only English is uh, left for us. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, I, I want to start from uh, the challenge of academical historiography. When we are gathering during the uh, celebration, 100 year, and usually it is not the best uh, 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 environment for the academical historiography. Historians usually like to think about what's not clear, to think about what's not enough uh, uh, told, and uh, and uh, the. Um, uh, occasions like this one uh, usually pushes us towards some uh, some uh, content with uh, clear symbolism, uh, with uh, with some uh, um, uh, effort to stress on the most important facts. Repeat something what's known even in Wikipedia. Uh, uh, and I'm glad that uh, Simona Strelcovas is a moderator for our discussion. Because watching him, I would say situation in the general academical knowledge of everything what's uh, around Sugihara or Lithuania or Kaunas 1939-1940 when the events just happened that more and more uh, of the academical research uh, and the publications we got starting from a successful book written by by Simonas Strelcovas himself uh, a couple of months ago, we saw uh, another book published in Lithuanian uh, uh, of uh, uh, Lina Svenslauskas uh, of uh, the story of Lithuanian anti-Semitism, and especially the, 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 the moods and the attitudes towards uh, Jewish destiny among Lithuanian society, which up to now was not so clear. And uh, uh, this is very important because it uh, makes some international library of the Sugihara topic, starting from uh, from people like like David Kranzler or 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 Ile Levine in search of Sugihara or now Lithuanian uh, books. I mean that it's very important. To, to follow the line, to go deeper and deeper, to base upon archives and new discoveries to tell what happened. Not to allow different uh, uh, superficial uh, tendencies uh, to, to um, uh, uh, just flow in inertia. For example, one of the most challenging uh, uh, signs of that inertia would be telling uh, some uh, general stories about Sugihara's deeds and claiming that he saved uh, some uh, Jewish refugees from the uh, uh, Nazis or Holocaust in general. That's it, mostly. It's like a cliché. And then, mostly, especially during Sugihara house visits, uh, we are telling that, please, just remember the timing. What time is that? The uh, fall uh, 1939, beginning of the Second World War, was just the moment of Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Nobody knew yet about ongoing Holocaust plans. It's still two years before Pearl Harbor, if you want, and the uh, Vanzea conference, which decided about final solution. And it is uh, so simple to put uh, uh, the later events and explanations on the previous, uh, uh, previous years. What's quite clear, being aware that Sugihara issued his visas a couple of weeks after Soviets occupied Lithuania only, he spent longer period being a, a vice consul in Lithuania, but no visas were required for that need. Jewish refugees who were pushed by the Nazis across Lithuania and Polish, or previous Polish border to Lithuania, to become a refuge in, in Lithuania was not a, 
any sort of heroic act. Massively, Nazis pushed the Jews out of the occupied territory of previous Poland to Lithuania. This act was not uh, required uh, of any uh, heroic uh, uh, decision to be made. Only after Soviets entered Baltic states, they were required. Because in the Western Belarusian and the Western Ukrainian territories, previous Polish territories, Jews were persecuted already by the Soviets. Deportations. Three or four even uh, waves of deportations, and the last one, according to the British historian Roger Moorhouse, the last one was completely of Jewish people who were deported from the, the newly annexed by the Soviet territories to Siberia. All conservative Jewry, yeshivas in Mir or later in Telsh, the students, the professors were stressed by that fact. They knew what the communism and Soviets mean. But, but in the world context, when we say that, first of all, the, those people who were helped uh, issuing visas, they escaped the Soviets. And objectively, they escaped the Holocaust, which will come later. And see, so simple, all facts are known. But how do we, we tell that story? And maybe good to say that, you know, the past is already quiet. Everybody died. But our relation with that past, our interpretations of that past, our heroes from that past, they depend much more on ours, on living people. Maybe even Russian aggression against Ukraine, again, helps us to reconsider what happened many years ago and the choices, what the diplomats were enforced to do or some other people, what, were, what, what, what they were enforced to do. This is so important. But uh, having in mind uh, my 10 minutes, which are close to end, uh, I think that uh, watching this advertisement and thinking that, uh, that uh, uh, behind any uh, uh, pathetic uh, title, there is some very serious question, very serious question. And this question for me, for this roundtable debate would be, could we um, uh, understand, recognize, see any difference in uh, the way of uh, heroic portray or creating heroic portray of Sugihara in Japanese imagination and in Lithuanian imagination? Yes, we claim it's our joint hero. Yes, I agree with that. He is a symbol of Japanese-Lithuanian 100-year uh, relations and so on and so on. It's, it's okay with that. But do we see any differences? Why? Which, which part of, of uh, the deeds of, of this uh, uh, individual are um, appreciated more in Japanese side, more in Lithuanian or Western? How much we are um, uh, um, uh, aware about the history of heroization of Chiyune Sugihara. Somehow I think that the West, first of all, just recognized an individual, some mid-70s, I would say. Okay, we can, we can uh, measure uh, from the date when, uh, when Israel and uh, Yad Vashem gave him uh, righteous um, uh, um, people uh, title and so on. But uh, in my understanding, the first step was somewhere mid-70s and David Kranzler's book, The Jews, Japanese, and Shanghai Community. Fundamental one, up to now, uh, uh, very actual, we should translate that to Lithuanian and un uh, any other languages. It, 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 it is somehow heroization of or recognition of Sugihara from the very, very depth of, of history and, and uh, all those facts. But the Westerners saw him somehow doing the, 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 the visas work. 
and then later uh, wider and wider uh, involvement, including state structures or diplomacy or, 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 or national communication, uh, uh, enlarging uh, that, that, that hero. And the crossroad for heroization, especially in the time of the cancel culture, the moment when we are removing more monuments than we are putting new monuments for the new heroes. Watch the United States or, or, or uh, United Kingdom, the post-colonial countries and all that stuff. It's in our space. Add uh, all symbols of Soviet occupation, all uh, symbols of our heroes, non-heroes or anti-heroes. Some destinies of, of the memorial plate on the Vrublevskis uh, library wall for General uh, Noreika. Or if we would take uh, in mind uh, Stepan Bandera in the contemporary Ukraine. How to tell and how to have attitude and relation with the hero, which was a controversy in our East Central Europe, or the bloodlands, according to um, Timothy Snyder, American historian. Because somehow say that for us, it's much more complicated to have heroes in general. Because our heroes sometimes are perpetrators and uh, war criminals, too. In one person. And it's so challenging, so difficult to perceive that for the younger generation to... to, to adopt to, 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 to have some, some feeling that we are the kinsmen of, of those people. And in this respect, the last point for Sugihara, I would say that when in that storytelling crossroad, uh, we see uh, some, some uh, bigger trouble that if Sugihara was the loyal and very well-organized uh, uh, representative of uh, Japanese government in uh, uh, Lithuania, more active he was implementing, implementing uh, Japanese policy, less he is individual hero. Some logic, elementary, because just a loyal individual. And what we see in his uh, act, uh, really, and what we could appreciate, how much of individual humanity we could trace in his deeds. And I, when I remember Ilel Levine, an uh, excellent historian, uh, telling about discoveries in Japanese archives, that say, British Foreign Office note for Japanese uh, government uh, uh, in uh, the uh, summertime 1940. British side blame, blamed uh, Japanese, saying that you should stop this loose Kanun Sugihara in Kaunas, because he is issuing visas to, oh, sp he spread visas uh, all directions. And you know, it's not the British interest. Because we know they will cross Soviet Union, they will come to Shanghai. When the war will end, you know where they will go? Palestine, for sure. And this is not British interest. See, see it's his story. And now how to tell the story, what was uh, really uh, uh, exclusive, what makes uh, an individual, uh, an officer, loyal one, exceptional, exploiting his human uh, resources and deciding to do something what's not only on the rails of, of the uh, office uh, duties and, and uh, all that stuff. And in this respect, I would say that for Lithuanians, Sugihara is a hero because this point of humanity, not only you are just a, a regular, loyal, uh, practitioner of the public services. No, something what excludes, excluded him as the individual, as the human being. And this humanity, it's still for us challenging, exemplary, to be followed, and to, to stay with some belief that the noble act by the individual is still possible. And all of us, sometimes can do that. 
This is a message, and I lost my time. Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, Indeed, I think that um, the heroes are always uh, have two, two sides, artificial and natural. And I guess it depends on our expectations, what we need from uh, heroes. Professor uh, Chiharu um uh, this floor is yours. So please tell us and give us a message to uh, Lithuanian and Japanese young generations. Yes, thanks a lot for inviting me to this excellent conference. See, it's uh, by the way, last week, Dr. Streltsovas was in Japan, here in Nagoya. <laughs> he was a <coughs> lecturer of the Sugihara lecture last year uh, it's last week i i just want to show you g g wait a moment yes yes it's uh, uh, today's uh, presentation and uh, last week I uh, we open the <clears throat> this kind kind of uh, it's a centenary lectures of diplomatic relations between Lithuania and Japan at major university. Major university is my university, and this is a photos. It's uh, Dr. Streltsovas giving our lectures and Chiune Sugihara and the past, present, and the future. And then Dr. Salvius Krebicius of Berenius University, he gave uh, its memory of Sugihara. And after that, we ate uh, at Shakotis. <laughs> it's a Japanese student never eaten this kind of cakes. <laughs> so uh, we ate a cakes and it's a talk about the uh, Sugihara Chiune Volunteer Guide Program. It's uh, why we are arranging the, this kind of lectures and uh, this kind of uh, Sugihara Chiune Volunteer Guide Program is because that Chiune Sugihara was born in Gifu. Gifu is near Nagoya. Nagoya is uh, almost uh, it's a uh, three million people living is the third biggest city in Japan. It's a, a, a very close to Nagoya is a Toyota city. So Nagoya is the city of Toyota. <laughs> and he studied a high school in Nagoya in 1915 to 1918. And his graduated high school name is the Zuiryo High School. And in the front of the Zuiryo High School, now there is a Chune Park. Exactly this photo. This photo is the Sugihara Chune Park. And it's uh, here we are now, uh, I'm arranging a uh, volunteer guide program for student, young student, uh, because it's uh, uh, this park, many people visit this park, but uh, they, uh, most of them don't know well about Sugihara, so it's need uh, some kind of guide. So uh, major university, we arrange a volunteer guide program for students. So, and another photos. It's uh, this is uh, raising Sugihara Chune Fund for Ukrainian refugees in Lithuania in April 2022. You see, there's the uh, four photos. This photos is very close to my university, major university. There is a uh, uh, <coughs> Nagoya dog. This is a baseball playing dome. 
very big dome. It's more or almost uh, 40,000 people can watch a baseball here. In the front of baseball hall, uh, uh, dome, we are uh, <coughs> we raising a fund for Ukrainian refugees, but uh, uh, there are too many Ukrainian uh, refugees in Europe, so I pointed out to concentrate uh, refugees in Lithuania. Why in refugees in Lithuania we now concentrate? Because it's a Chiune Sugihara rescued refugees in 1940. So we have to run the humanitarian history. So I asked my student to raise a fund and the student helped us to <clears throat> get the money. And it is something succeeded that it's uh, in June, 19, uh, June 22, we have succeeded to collect 35,000 euros. So, and uh, I have already sent to Lisania. I hope those money are used for Ukrainian refugees in Lisania. And here is one more thing that it's uh, uh, I and the Nagoya City's high school history teachers edited a book, a history textbook of Chiyune Sugihara. It, uh, this book was edited and published two years ago and uh, almost 80,000 80, copies were issued and distributed to all of secondary school students in Nagoya two years ago. So we have a lot of connection with Sugihara in Nagoya. And it's, uh, and we now know that Sugihara rescued uh, refugees in Lithuania. So we know, uh, we want to know about Lithuania more. What kind of country Lithuania is and has been. And it's, uh, I wanted to point it out that not only Sugihara, refugees in 1940 were not rescued. Not only Japan, uh, Sugihara, but also this onion support for refugees as much more important than Sugihara, I believe. So it's uh, we have to think about the this kind of uh, not cooperation, but some kind of friendship between Lithuania and Japan about rescuing refugees. And nowadays, again, it's uh, after the <clears throat> Putin's war, it's uh, we have to rescue again the refugees each in, in cooperation between Lithuania and Japan. Thanks for your listening. It's yes. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Naba. Thank you for your speech. And indeed, uh, I truly believe in cooperation and friendship, as you said, between Japan and uh, Lithuania. And Sugihara plays very, very important role in this uh, friendship. Um, Professor uh, Minogas Kwiatkowskas, um, please, the floor is yours.
Thank you very much and good afternoon. Um, as it was already told by Professor Alexandrovichus, Sugihara's story amazes us as a phenomenon of uh, free choice, free individual choice. And one of the topics of our discussion uh, is this question, freedom of, uh, uh, of choice. <clears throat> Regardless of uh, our usual uh, loyalties, of political circumstances, of uh, forces that affect us all in any situation. We are among the social, political or any other sources, powers, which uh, affect our, um, our position and our uh, action. Uh, now, thinking about this, this phenomenon uh, um, of, uh, of Sugihara, thinking about the, uh, the roots and motives of his choice, I think it is uh, also important to look at uh, other testimonies from that time. Uh, in particular, uh, to look at the testimonies of survivors themselves, of Holocaust uh, victims. I'm a researcher of literature and a translator of uh, uh, Jewish and Holocaust literature into Lithuanian language. And I think that uh, a very interesting um, very interesting fact is that the question of free pers personal choice is a very uh, often and recurrent topic in the famous text of Holocaust literature. The most famous memoirs, diaries, especially those written uh, during, the, the, uh, during the war or in the immediate, uh, immediate period, the first years. After the, uh, after, after, after the Second uh, world, uh, world War. This reflection upon the personal choice <coughs> that makes a difference also uh, puts this literature as Holocaust literature, the memoirs, the diaries, in some contrast uh, to the most popular trends in the postmodern literature, which usually speaks about chance, about a play of chance. The literature, the so-called literature of, of witness most usually speaks about the significance of choice. Choice, not the chance. And uh, I would like to um, present a few different examples that I think can help us also um, reflect upon uh, the phenomenon of um, uh, Sugihara uh, himself. Three, uh, four different examples. Uh, first of them is uh, an author of uh, one of the most famous uh, Holocaust memoirs, Viktor Frankl, an Austrian psychiatrist, founder of existential psychology, uh, who during the, the Holocaust su survived four concentration camps, including, including Theresienstadt and, uh, and Auschwitz. And after the war, uh, Viktor Frankl's existential psychology, the school, the school that he, he, he founded, uh, was deeply influenced by the experiences which he had in the concentration camps. And his most uh, famous book, he, an international bestseller, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, uh, it's an English translation of its title, is a combination of a memoir from Auschwitz and a psychological study. A study about the human behavior in extreme situations, about the types of behavior, about the, uh, the, the, uh, the motives, about the reactions, and about different forms of what means to be human in such a situation. And Viktor Frankl asks about the possibility of choice then, from the first uh, uh, from the first sight, a man has no such possibilities. And I would like to quote uh, quote one um, uh, one fragment from uh, uh, from his uh, study um, about this possibility. It's a lengthy quote, but I think it's worth uh, worth thinking about in the context of Sugihara. 
So I'm quoting the English translation by Ilze Lash. In attempting the psychological presentation and explanation of the typical characteristics of a concentration camp inmate, I may give the impression that the human being is completely and unavoidably influenced by his surroundings. But what about human liberty? Is there no spiritual freedom in regard to behavior and reaction to any given surroundings? Does man have no choice of action in the face of such circumstances? We can answer these questions from experience as well as on principle. The experiences of camp life show that man does have a choice of action. There were enough examples, often of a heroic nature, which proved that apathy could be overcome, irritability suppressed. Man can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom, of independence of mind, even in such terrible conditions of psychic, uh, of psychic and physical stress. Every day, every hour offered the opportunity to make a decision. A decision which determined whether you would, whether you would or would not submit to those, to those powers which threatened to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom, which determined whether or not you would become the plaything of circumstance. So Viktor Frankl writes about a very particular examples of people from very different backgrounds, not necessarily intellectuals, not necessarily religious, not necessarily the prisoners themselves. He also writes, uh, writes about the guards, about, uh, about the Nazis, about the Germans, who in those circumstances also secretly acted in order to some, somehow to help the inmates. And he, for example, tells one uh, very uh, moving story about uh, the SS man uh, who uh, secretly bought uh, medicine for the prisoners of Auschwitz, for the inmates. And uh, when the Allied forces came, the prisoners refused to uh, tell where this Nazi hid, uh, where this Nazi was hidden, uh, uh, unless they had a clear, uh, a, a clear promise um, uh, from uh, from the Allied authorities that this man, this Nazi, uh, Nazi uh, would be uh, uh, would be freed, would be uh, would not be arrested. Uh, so. Uh, the freedom of, uh, ch uh, of choice even in such um, uh, situations. Another famous Holocaust writer, Primo Levi, an Italian Jewish writer who survived uh, Auschwitz as well as Frankl, and who wrote his most famous memoir, If This Is a Man, immediately afterwards in 1946. Uh, Primo Levi is also a kind of psychologist, identifying types of human behavior under extreme circumstances and also phenomena of psychological submission and hopeless su su surrender, aggression and brutality, even, even among the prisoners, but also, uh, also of decency, moral resistance and altruism, which according to him were rare very rare, but not impossible. Many situations show, show that such choices were not impossible. And he also describes his impetus to survive as very much connected to his own refusal to treat his fellow men as things. When he writes about the states, about in a psych psychological states in the concentration camp, Primo Levi uh, 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 tells that people started being um, degraded, turned into animals, uh, when, uh, when they accepted the treatment of 
their fellow prisoners as things, as other things, as other animals fighting for survival. The, this inner ref refusal to treat the other as a thing was something that was also very much connected to the impetus of survival, of uh, inner resistance. And I will quote also a small quotation from Primo Levi's um, uh, book, If This Is a Man. The fact that I survived and returned unharmed, in my view, is due principally to luck. Pre-existing factors played only a small role, such as my training in mountain life and my profession, profession which allowed me some privileges in the last months of prison. Maybe also an unfailing interest in the human spirit also helped me. And the will not only to survive, which was common to many, but to survive for the precise purpose of recounting the things we had witnessed and had endured. And perhaps, perhaps fin finally, what also counted was the will, which I tenaciously preserved to always recognize, even in the dar darkest days, in my companions and myself, men and not things, and thus to avoid that total humiliation and demoralization that led many to spiritual shipwreck. I don't know how much time we have left, still a couple of minutes. Then at least one more example from Lithuania, from Lithuanian Holocaust literature from our, um, uh, our most important uh, uh, members. I have translated into Lithuanian uh, language a Yiddish diary written by 15-year-old Itzhok Rudashevsky, an inmate of uh, Vilnius, uh, Vilnius, uh, Vilnius ghetto. Uh, he, he was a schoolboy uh, at the Vilnius uh, Yiddish gymnasium, a very talented uh, uh, teenager. Uh, Interested in history, uh, he thought of himself as a future historian or a writer. Um, and Itzhok Rudashevsky decided to write his uh, diary in the ghetto as a form of survival, as a form of resistance against the de dehumanization. But also one of his motives, he, which he describes in his diary, is to record everything that will afterwards have to be weighed on the scales of history, to re record everything in order to be able to reflect upon it and um, um, <clears throat> um, to evaluate it uh, in future. Many entries, entries in Itzhak Rudashevsky's diary also reflect upon acts of uh, the ghetto inmates, acts of surrender, acts of collaboration. For example, he very critically writes about the ghetto police. Um, uh, and, but also um, of um, resistance, of inner resistance. For example, the resistance of his teachers in the ghetto gymnasiums, uh, gymnasium. And he also describes his inner condition, his inner states, as a continuous struggle between the opposite forces, between despair and, and confidence, uh, between nihilism and faith. This struggle is going on in his inner life, in his inner psyche. And I would like to quote uh, uh, a very nice example from uh, Itzhak Rudashevsky's diary an entry on the occasion of his 15th birthday in the Vilnius ghetto, uh, which was on December the 10th, 1943, 95 years ago. Exactly, December, Itzhak Rudashevsky would have turned 95 if he was alive this, uh, this December. Um, I quote uh, English translation by Rose Waldman. I suddenly realized that today is my birthday. I turned 15 today. You don't notice at all how time rushes by. Time runs ahead unnoticed. And suddenly you realize, as I did today, for example, that it is passing by. 
I was very contemplative today. In the ghetto, I had decided not to waste time, and I feel lucky that I am able to learn, to read, to develop, and I see that time isn't standing still, but, but that I am going along with it, with it normally. I want to take back this year and hold on to it for later until my new life. The second thing I feel today is courage and hope. I do not feel the slightest despair. Today I became 15 years old and I live with a confidence of the future. I do not have two points of view. I see in front of me only sun, sun and more sun. This is the 15 year old teenager writing on his 15th anniversary, uh, 15th birthday in the Vilna uh, ghetto. I think this is all, uh, also a clear example of a freedom of inner choice and inner struggle, characteristic of people in extreme situations. And I think it occurs from these, for all these examples that free eth ethical choice the freedom of choice is not related to a person's background, to his age, um, to his um, um, intellectual maturity, so to speak, social or cultural identity. As Viktor Frankl wrote, in the end, the free choice is the only possession that no one can take away from us. And Chunya Sugihara is important as one of those rare people who clearly understood how to make use of this possession. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, <clears throat> Professor. Um, indeed, sometimes I think that today we have less freedom than in 1940, despite all the modernization. Um, I'm very thankful to Embassy of Japan in Lithuania for initiative uh, to organize this roundtable discussion. And uh, I would like to, to ask uh, His Excellency, uh, Ambassador of Japan in Lithuania, to give his speech. Please, Ambassador. Yes, thank you very much for the, the, the introduction. And, uh, it's quite a great opportunity uh, to have some uh, message to the younger generation, mostly to a, to a, a Japanese young generation. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to say today is a bit, uh, for the Lithuanian guess it's uh, not so uh, anything new, <laughs> but uh, maybe for uh, Japanese people, I think uh, it's, uh, I think it need to know. Uh, the Lithuanian way of uh, history. Yeah. So I came to Lithuania one year and two months ago, and since then I have had the opportunity to feel the history every week and every month. In Lithuania, there are many historical uh, state uh, events led by the leaders, uh, presidents, uh, speakers of uh, famous and the prime ministers. Uh, for, example, I, for example, I attended the state events for anniversaries such as the Day of Statehood on July 6, 1253, the Day of Re-establishment of the State on February 16, 1918, and the Day of Re-establishment of Independence on March 11, uh, 1990. They're very important annual efforts to reconfirm the milestones of the country's attainment of freedom and independence. There are also many memorial events uh, for those who sacrificed their lives for freedom and independence, such as memorial for the victims of the very tragic sacrifice uh, in January 1991 uh, caused by Soviet military invasion or Vilnius and the victims of the tragic massacre by Soviet soldiers at the border during the same period of time, and the victims of the Soviet deportation to Siberia, 
and the victims of the Holocaust in Nazi Germany, occupied Lithuania, and so on. So Lithuania remembers them every year on Remembrance Day and renews its determination never to forget their precious sacrifices. So, and additionally, since the Russian invasion to Ukraine on the victims of uh, the Ukraine war are also uh, commemorated during these national events. And Ukraine's Independence Day was solemnly marked on last October, uh, August 24th with the participation of uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian citizens who have taken refuge in Lithuania. Also in Lithuania, I was surprised September the 1st, uh, the starting day of the new school year is importantly called Science and Knowledge Day. And there are ceremonies in schools over the, over the country. Uh, this year, I was invited to Mikolas Romeris University to attend the ceremony, and I was very impressed by the speeches of the rector and major guests who uh, repeatedly stressed that the purpose of education and learning is freedom and peace. This is not the case in Japan. Anyway, there are I think these are truly the scenes in a country that knows the significance of the freedom and peace and the immeasurable cost of lost, losing freedom. So now for uh, Lithuania, which cherishes such history, uh, passed a resolution in the, its parliament to designate the year 2020 as Chune Sugihara year. I believe when uh, Dr. Kubietkowska's son uh, was a uh, Minister of Culture, as it was the uh, 120th anniversary of Sugihara's uh, birth and the uh, 80th anniversary of the visa for life. And Shigeru Sugihara came to, as it already mentioned, Lithuania in 1939, just before the invasion of Poland by German Nazis. And it's already Dr. Alexander Richardson uh, pointed out that it was two years before Japan's Pearl Harbor attack. And state was just one, one year uh, in the Kaunas, in the, as a deputy counselor in Kaunas, the capital at the time. It was here that Shiune Sugihara demonstrated his courage to do justice as a human being. He was not influenced by the national stance of Japan at the time or its decision on actions and kept demonstrating his courage, influenced only by a human wish to act in a righteous way. As a result, thousands of Jews did not lose their freedom and their lives, which is a piece of history that we Japanese should be proud of. But on the other hand, it's also true that the first half of the 20th century was as a whole, a period of human injustice for Japan as a nation as a result of its expansion into other countries facing the Western powers, this kind of historical facts uh, should be re-recognized and passed on from uh, generation to generation, which I have come to feel keenly in Lithuania, a country that values its history. As you know, since the Meiji era, Japan, even by creating the religion called State Shintoism and pushed forward on the past to nation-wide formation and wealth and military might. However, the result was a huge disaster where Japan greatly restricted the freedom not only of other countries that Japan had advanced, but, only, but also of its, of its own country and forcing enormous sacrifices on its own people and other countries and lost its independence in defeat. I have come to feel a strong desire to re-acknowledge this history as I look back at Chiyune Sugihara. So freedom is essentially the freedom to criticize power. Deprived of his freedom, those who defy authority were arrested only on suspicion without evidence and sent to Siberia or simply executed. That, is, that was a loss of freedom that Lithuania experienced after the Second World War. 
In other words, freedom is to demonstrate the courage to correct injustice when you find it in your organization or um, society or state you that includes you. So courage is the highest virtue required for free men since the day of Aristotle. And as you know, the analects of Confucius said that to see righteousness and not to do, it is to lack of courage. So I believe that exercising those courage is what makes freedom and peace possible. And as you know, in Belarus, uh, the neighboring country, many people with such courage have been arrested and imprisoned. So we Japanese should look back at our history and should realize that freedom is to exercise the courage in the pursuit of justice. So shortly after I arrived in Lithuania, uh, a politician recommended me the history of Lithuania, an English version on a history book compiled by uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2013, maybe, uh, for a wider range of readers like me. In the preface, the reason for compiling this history book is stated as a nation's future is contingent upon its memory. And the phrase from a letter sent by a Lithuanian educator to a Polish history writer in 1859 was quoted as a typical example of this. It says, a nation's history must be on every citizen's lips, and then that nation will be immortal. This is the essence of what I'm learning from Lithuania, a country that has always respected Shivana Sugihara. So this year that marks the 100th anniversary of a friendship between Lithuania and Japan. As we are taking another look at Shivana Sugihara, I would like to discuss Japan's history head on, especially with those of uh, a younger generation who will lead in next generation and to reconfirm the preciousness and the importance of freedom and peace and the difficulty of maintaining them. We would also like to reconfirm at the same time our historical awareness that the war today, Ukraine is fighting on the Ukrainian soil, is a war for freedom and democracy in the world. And we'd like to once again have a determination to utmost support for the people of Ukraine. So finally, as you know, uh, Prime Minister Shimonite made a, a working visit to Japan at the end of October, and I would like to share with you what she said in an online interview uh, just before her visit. As you know, uh, Russia has a very uh, history of Stalinism, which made enormous sacrifices both inside and outside the Soviet Union, including those he uh, history, uh, the Prime Minister said, Russia is a country that has not obliged itself to re-examine their own past. So, as you know, at the end of this war, uh, if some kind of package revival plan for a defeated Russia is presented, Prime Minister said, a rational rethinking of their past must be imposed as a condition for the new Russian state. Otherwise, a similar Russia will emerge sooner or later, as it has been the case for 100 years of the Russian history. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Indeed, re-examine its uh, history is probably one of the most important abilities of each state and each nation. We learn from history, and uh, if we are free enough to re-examine, it, it, I guess it, it, it makes some uh, purpose for future generations. Uh, Vice Minister and former Ambassador in Japan, I guess <coughs> you, you get uh, more knowledge uh, from the perspective of Lithuania and from the perspective uh, slightly from Japan as you live there and work there. So uh, please share your experience and uh, knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Professor uh, Simonas, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador, professors, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests. 
First of all, I would like to thank organizers for this very timely and very needed event for this very interesting, at the same time, open and frank discussion about Junior Sugihara legacy and uh, our messages to Lithuanian and Japanese youth representatives, but at the same time about what is happening right now in the beginning of 21st century. But uh, first of all, uh, let me say that we are just following what uh, Ambassador of Japan said. We are more than happy to, um, to mark uh, uh, 100th anniversary of uh, uh, Lithuania-Japan friendship, diplomatic relations. And at the same time, it's very symbolic that uh, 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 a few weeks ago, two Prime Ministers, uh, uh, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Lithuanian Prime Minister um, uh, Madam uh, Ingrida Shimonita announced uh, <laughs> uh, 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 publicly that uh, Japan and Lithuania decided to upgrade the uh, 100 years long friendship to uh, strategic partnership. That's really a fantastic achievement, especially taking into account that these two remote countries with uh, quite different cultures, quite... Uh, there are some similarities in our history, but uh, 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 in general, uh, there are more differences. And uh, in the end, those two countries demonstrate to the rest of the world such a fantastic friendship and partnership. It's a really great achievement and taking this opportunity, I would like to thank sincerely to all our Japanese friends for your invaluable contribution to your hard work and uh, sincerity and uh, support and uh, help in promoting Lithuanian Japanese cooperation and friendship. Of course, we can talk hours here about uh, our achievements and cooperation in politics and economy and culture, but we always say that uh, uh, backbone, access, background for two nations, two countries, cooperation is, of course, human context. Uh, cooperation between uh, non governmental organizations. And uh, here, uh, even uh, looking from a historical perspective, mm, we see that uh, the very first uh, Lithuanian-Japanese uh, contact happened thanks to Yukiji Fukuzawa, who visited Europe in uh, 1862, and so happened that he spent, uh, I don't remember exactly, one or two nights in Kaunas. He was really, he was the very first Japanese in, in Lithuania and opened open this door for our future future cooperation. Here also would like to mention very famous uh, Lithuanian uh, 20th century uh, journalist and traveler Mata Shelchus, who his first visit to Japan happened in, uh, uh, I believe, um, uh, 1940. <laughs> he visited some countries in Asia by uh, motorbike, including, including Japan, spent uh, many months here. And in, uh, he was uh, one of the first Lithuanians intro uh, who introduced uh, Japan to Lithuanians. But of course, uh, the most probably known, the most famous person is Chuina Sugihara. I uh, fully subscribe to uh, words about uh, our hero Chuina Sugihara that uh, were already said by previous speakers. I just would like to maybe mention that his, uh, his life, his deed uh, could be, I believe, in the best way described by very famous Jewish saying from Talmud that uh, uh, everyone who saves one life saves our world entire. And uh, I have read some articles by uh, international scientists who uh, tried to, to make a research uh, uh, how, uh, how many uh, descendants Chunya Sugihara's survivors 
uh, uh, had, and it appears that uh, there are uh, more than 50 or 60,000 of them. So in, 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 in this case, Chunya Sugihara, we can, we can say that he saved uh, tens of thousands of uh, uh, lives and uh, and uh, entire entire world. Speaking about Chunya Sugihara's deed, we always very often say never again, meaning that we hope that uh, the war, uh, like the Second World War, which um, happened in 20th century, is not going hap to happen again, but it happened. Uh, all nine months ago, Russia brutally attacked peaceful, peaceful Ukraine, and uh, as Ambassador uh, already mentioned, it's not just Russia's attack uh, against Ukraine. It's an attack, a war against global, total democratic community, Lithuania, Japan, and other countries belong to. Uh, many people still don't understand and are asking why. And here I believe we should speak about crime and punishment. I believe uh, mm, Russia is so brutal and aggressive because this country has never been brought to justice and punished for its very brutal crimes. Just a few examples. 1932-33, Holodomor, genocide against <coughs> Ukrainian nation. Russia wasn't punished for this crime. 1939, attack against Poland. 1940, uh, killings of tens of thousands of, of Polish officers. 1940, occupa first occupation of Baltic states. Attack against Finland. 1945, second occupation of Baltic states. Attack against Japan occupying uh, mm, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, some islands. 1956, invasion to Hungary. 1968, invasion to Czechoslovakia. 1979, uh, invasion to Afghanistan. 2008, uh, 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 attack against Georgia. 2014, first. Uh, mm, uh, military attack against Ukraine and occupation of some ter territories. And Russia has never been punished for these crimes. So I believe uh, now uh, supporting Ukraine, which is fighting, as ambassador of Japan already said, not only for their future, their independence, but also for our future freedom and, and, and independence, I have no doubt that uh, Ukraine will win. Uh, there is no other possibility, but at the same time, uh, we have to think about justice and accountability. And in the end, uh, as <laughs> all of uh, participants of the discussion were asked about some messages addressed to uh, youth representatives, young. Lithuanian and Japanese. So, my mm, message consists of three parts. First, mm, dear friends, uh, uh, I believe you are lucky you were born in times of peace, democracy, uh, welfare. But uh, following what, what was said here, don't forget that it's not for granted. People have to fight for their freedom, independence, uh, mm, sovereignty, and uh, to preserve, to work hard in preserving it for future generations as well. Second, in the context of uh, Ukrainian fight against uh, Russia, please continue and double your support, your efforts in supporting uh, Ukrainians, be it uh, humanitarian, financial, or support to refugees or, or to, to Ukrainian, Ukrainian army. 
please always remember, uh, as I said, they are fighting also for your freedom and for your future. And third, speaking maybe about long-term future, you will be creators uh, of, uh, of this medium and long-term future. So that is your res responsibility to work hard and to do everything to follow Junior Sagiharas and others heroes um, uh, 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 example please do everything that it would not happen again thank you very much um, <clears throat> thank you very much uh, speaking about the youth Indeed, our uh, roundtable discussion is dedicated to our youth uh, to give them opportunity to <clears throat> not only participate, but on, uh, also to ask some questions. And I'm truly glad uh, that we have here uh, some young students who, I'm, who I know, uh, Ugne, Meda, Austeya, Samantha, Pius, Danielius. I know that you have prepared some questions. So. Please uh, do not hesitate. You have an opportunity and ask uh, one, two questions. Uh, dear Ambassador of Japan, uh, what uh, positive changes uh, in the life of the youth in Japan and Lithuania have you noticed recently? And um, what advice could you give to young people to stay positive in such complicated situations that we encounter no nowadays due to pandemic, climate change, and even peace crisis? Is that two questions for me, or one for me and one for one for, both, both to me? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> the first question, I, I think, uh, recently I had a video, video conversation with a very young uh, uh, businessman uh, in Japan, and he said that uh, he's, he's learning a lot of languages, like Lithuanians, and uh, he's getting out of the country. I mean, why? Because, you know, it's country is, is very important, but Nowadays, the younger generation can communicate each other more uh, beyond the border. And I found out a very uh, good example for the Japanese young businessman who is aggressively uh, learning, uh, you know, languages and the outside countries and be ready for the getting out to communicate with you. So that's, uh, I think, uh, the Lithuanian young people, they are already also those uh, very aggressive uh, uh, mindset. So that's, I think, very good mindset uh, improvement of a younger generation recently. And uh, it's, uh, you said, the second question is, you said it's very complicated, but it's not so complicated. It's, uh, it's very simple. And uh, so please, uh, uh, please get back to your uh, history not just Lithuania, uh, but Europe maybe, and to, for, for, with, your, with your strong uh, kind of compass to understand the history, then it comes very uh, clear and uh, simple uh, so that you can talk with your uh, friends and your parents, maybe your future children, et cetera. So uh, that's, that's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have, I see, uh, another question. Yes, please. Dear Professor Enoba, how does the memory of Shigahara activities and selflessness help to grow our country's bond stronger? And I'd also like to add, uh, in your opinion, what is the best initiative to do to keep the memory of Sugihara alive? Uh, 
Professor Naba, we can't hear you now. Please, uh, we have to fix some uh, sound issues. One second. You know, it's a mute on your terrestrial. No, which one? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. It's okay now. <laughs> now, it's uh, sorry that it's uh, sounds for the memory issues uh, is uh, uh, especially in Nagoya here is uh, many people uh, thinking about Sugihara is the hero of our city, our region. It's not the hero of Japan, but hero of our region. <laughs> Our city, it's a much more closer existence than you are, but uh, <laughs> so, but uh, in Nagoya also many people are thinking how to continue the memorize of Sugihara. And that's the reason why it's uh, in the elementary schools, secondary schools, high school, and universities. Uh, we are teaching something about Sugihara, and they are talking each other about Sugihara, and such kind of memory will be broadened to other regions as uh, all over Japan and also to other countries, not only Lithuania, but also other countries. And uh, it's uh, uh, this is a memory affair. Uh, uh, sorry, what is the one more question? Please tell me once more. Uh, what is what kind of initiative uh, can we do to keep the memory of Sugihara alive? Oh, yes, it's uh, uh, many kind of initiatives, uh, but I think it's uh, to teach to younger generation, uh, you are all, uh, <laughs> younger than we are, but it's, uh, you have to teach to other people then. When we uh, would like to teach them, we have to understand about Sugihara. So we have to input the memory of Sugihara in our brain, then it's that kind of activity, don't forget. <laughs> so let's try to teach about Sugihara, then I hope that it's that kind of memory initiative will be important. Yes, thanks. <laughs> Um, thank you very much. So you have one more question, okay? Short one, okay. Um, a question to Mr. Milunas. Um, organizations like Erasmus Plus and um, universities like Vilnius University have student exchanges between universities of Lithuania and Japan. And a lot of young people, like 16 and 17 year olds, want to study abroad but don't get the chance to. Do you think that uh, in the future it will be possible to have student exchanges between uh, Lithuanian and Japanese gymnasiums? Thank you very much. Great uh, question to the point and uh, uh, taking this opportunity, let me also express uh, great uh, satisfaction that we have uh, already more than 60 partnership, uh, partnerships between Lithuanian and Japanese universities. I believe uh, all Lithuanian universities, uni universities have at least one partnership with their counterparts in Japan, but I know that some like 
Vytautas Magnus have even more than 10 uh, or something like that partnership agreements with uh, various universities in Japan. So that creates a good platform for youth exchange, no doubt. And uh, uh, I don't know what is recent statistics, but some five, uh, seven years ago, at least 40 or 50 Lithuanian students uh, every year uh, 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 we are studying uh, short term, one year, uh, um, uh, two semesters, or maybe um, uh, longer time uh, uh, study visits to Japanese universities. So uh, definitely we will discuss with my dear colleague, Ambassador of Japan, about future perspectives, how to increase these possibilities for young people both in Lithuania and Japan, who would like to, to better know each other, to learn about uh, other countries' history, culture, uh, and uh, to contribute to our great partnership and uh, friendship. So, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Our round table uh, discussion uh, title is Our Hero Sugihara. And indeed, we have audience uh, also uh, from Lithuanian students and from Japanese students. And uh, at first, I would like to ask uh, some uh, Japanese students, do you have any questions? Yes, I see the hand, please. So thank you. So first of all, thank you for organizing this valuable event. Uh, I'm really, really honored to be here as uh, one of the Japanese participants. Um, so uh, I have one question for Professor Egi Dius and Professor Min Daugas. Uh, I have one question about the perspectives towards um, Sugihara Chune between Japan and Lithuania. Uh, I mean, if my understanding is correct, um, Japanese government after the World War II um, didn't admit his humanitarian contributions for Jews in Lithuania because what he did for Jews uh, at the time uh, means he broke the military alliance between Japan and Germany. Um, it was not until 1990 that the Japanese government um, finally admitted his humanitarian act as a good decision to help Jews. And it other, in other words, it took about 40 years or 45 years in Japan to recover his reputation. So I'm really, really wondering how about in Lithuania? I mean, uh, when, since when and how the Lithuanian government uh, came to admit his um, humanitarian act and um, started to expand his story to um, Lithuanian citizens. Is there any blanks until um, the Lithuanian government admitted his story, like in Japan or something? <laughs> Thanks for the question. Uh, it's quite simple to answer about our government's uh, stands or, or positions explained because up to 1990 were occupied country. No freedom of research, no freedom of storytelling about those events when the Soviets and the Nazis uh, made Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and uh, gave this uh, region of East Central Europe uh, to, to, to those aggressors to just to share. And uh, it was impossible to, to, to speak openly about those cases. Very, very little was done in terms of academical research, some emigres, historiography, but you know, it was not the central interest to, to go for those details when the uh, Soviet occupation massively destroyed previous state, deported people, and all those atrocities were, were overwhelming our attitudes. But I could say that right after 1990s, after Lithuania regained their uh, own independence, uh, uh, it uh, provoked a bigger interest in what happened before 1940, all 
blind spots of, of our memories were very, very rapidly reconstructed, sometimes not on a very good academical level, but, uh, but anyway, we were back to freedom. Freedom always means <coughs> differences of the interpretation, of the storytelling, sometimes competing, sometimes uh, the controversies also what, what uh, happened. And in this respect, I would say that uh, as the representative of uh, uh, the civic organization, uh, Sugihara Diplomats for Life Foundation, I would say that uh, the, uh, for me, the most important thing was that the, uh, the people, not only officials uh, who are somehow uh, uh, obliged on uh, the political correct uh, uh, interpretation, speeches, and so on, but the citizen themselves, like, like uh, the people around the Sugihara Diplomats for Life Foundation, joined, put those efforts to, to remind what happened and to include or to make uh, the joints between uh, heroic story of Sugihara, which was from that point getting more and more popular, but, but uh, around the world, I would say, 30 years passed, and now we can see uh, the, the, the trajectory of, of the popularity of the case and, 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 and the heroization of Sugihara uh, in, uh, personally. But uh, in general, uh, some sort of uh, uh, reconstruction of the events, evaluation of those events was a duty of the new independent Lithuanian state. And, uh, and uh, it, it came together. Not so often we could see uh, some sort of resonance, positive resonance of the public uh, independent imagination and uh, the memory and storytelling and the official stand of the governmental institutions. First of all, foreign office, because it's about diplomacy, it's about diplomats. And uh, I, I think that, uh, that uh, it's still uh, uh, going on. We still need to do a lot, not only uh, on the stage of, of, of lecturing or teaching the others, but also to implementing own duties to get deeper, research deeper, tell the story more and more uh, openly. And even uh, this event, 100 year, uh, anniversary of our diplomatic relations and the fact, if you read the past symbolically, it's a time of war. So Yahara came in, in the moment when the Nazis and the Soviets decided to shear, to divide, to occupy the region. He came with some specific mission, somehow made Lithuania and Japan closer, even if uh, the distance is about 10,000 kilometers, but Russian aggressiveness, Soviet aggressiveness made us the neighbors. And I think that if you go wider to history, it's not the time for that, but imagine additional facts that first uh, time when uh, this, uh, this sort of relations was like, uh, like uh, uh, an arch uh, uh, between so distant uh, uh, coasts, uh, it was uh, the Russian-Japanese war, beginning of the 20th century the first serious visits of Japanese intelligence officers and Lithuanian gentry and Polish future leader, uh, Yusuf Pilsudski, first visit to Japan that time. And Japanese strategical imagination just uh, uh, showed that uh, it's an interest, geostrategical interest, other side of that uh, uh, aggressive empire and made, made some basis for mutual cooperation. And I think uh, uh, in the 20s, uh, Lithuanian government also somehow uh, understood uh, this, uh, uh, have this in mind. Sometimes we can say that uh, the heroes are right people in the right place and at the right moment of history. And that's Sugihara. Your yeah. If I may just uh, add uh, a few thoughts. Well, um, because of that uh, repression of historical memory during the Soviet uh, uh, times, all kinds of historical memory that um, uh, does not coincide with official propaganda, 
very much uh, personal stories and fates were unknown and were uh, simply in a shadow during uh, the Soviet era. And they are continuously uh, coming back. We are being restored uh, during the years of ind independence at, and it is an ongoing process. Now, Sugihara in Lithuania is a very uh, nice, a fantastic example of institutions, foundation, uh, uh, studies. Uh, much has still to be, uh, to, be, uh, to be done. But he's a symbolical person, a symbolical figure. We have other such symbolical figures of rescuers, for righteous of the world. Like, for example, Ona Shemait. It might be such an example of a Lithuanian Jewish rescuers who is quite widely known, we have studies and so on. But there are, there are hundreds of names, even thousands of names, families who put their lives at risk during those times and who are being identified and their stories are being researched right now, year after year. Uh, our, um, uh, our presidents award each year uh, new awards for the uh, um, uh, Lithuanians uh, who uh, heroically rescued people during the Second World War, mostly Jews. And I also have personal uh, encounters. For example, um, uh, the uh, uh, children or grandchildren of survivors, Jewish survivors, coming back to Lithuania from United States, from, from Israel and from other countries, to meet the rescuers of their parents or grandparents, which were only now identified. Only now their stories have been proven. So this is going on and we have just many, many stories of people which have to be learned, which have to be, uh, uh, to be, to be studied and brought back to our memory. And I, uh, and I think that Simonas could also tell about such activities, being a new director to our Vilna Jewish, uh, Jewish Museum, a museum of a Vilna uh, Gaon, I think that much uh, work of this kind is also ahead of him. Um, thank you very much. <clears throat> the future seems bright and uh, I really hope that uh, we will do uh, all together, I mean, uh, for better cooperation and uh, not only Sugihara, but all the rescuers uh, will find it their place uh, for a younger generation to be better known. Do we have uh, another question from a Japanese uh, student site? Yes, I see. Um, for Professor Ozaki, um, what specific things do you want Japanese or exchange students to do after we return to Japan, like sharing, sharing Sugihara's pray for peace towards around us? Uh, thank you, thank you very much for 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 the question. Uh, I think uh, I'm, I'm sure you 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 visited the Sugihara House in Kaunas, and uh, maybe you learn a lot about uh, the history around Sugihara. Not at, and, and Mr. Inaba-san said, Professor Inaba said that not just Sugihara-san, other 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 many people. Uh, creating that, that event, basically. So, firstly, visit Sugihara house again, and then some simple understanding you made in yourself and getting back to Tokyo, Japan, and maybe gather your, your students to talk about that and Q&A and let them come here to visit Sugihara House. Thank you very much. <laughs> or maybe, maybe before that, you can visit uh, Nagoya or Gifu to feel Sugihara more in, in Japan. Yep, thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador.
I really would like to close uh, this discussion unless we have some burning question. If no, oh, yes, we have. <clears throat> Good evening, my name is Olega Susichovas, I'm a historian, and my question is um, uh, to the expert um, uh, of Sugihara Simonas, um, I think. Uh, so from your point of view, um, uh, which uh, social cultural skills uh, the humanism of Sugihara comes from? Maybe it comes from uh, Japanese traditional culture or maybe uh, from uh, Europeanized uh, uh, Japanese middle class, uh, or maybe uh, uh, some mixture of, of uh, both uh, cultural traditions. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a question. Actually, uh, the question uh, is uh, dedicated not for me as a historian, but uh, as Professor uh, Mindo Gaskatkowska said already, is always about the chance of choice, and I guess. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, was it about exactly Sugihara as a Japanese representative? I guess it's about the Sugihara as an individual. And uh, as uh, Professor Alexandrovich said already, uh, at that time in Kaunas, there were many different uh, representatives from foreign countries. But uh, Sugihara was uh, the one among uh, the others who didn't hesitate, or at least we know what he did um, in summer 1940. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that um, what he did wasn't based on his Japanese-ness. Uh, I think uh, it's rather um, about universal human values. So my, it's my personal opinion. Uh, maybe there are others, but uh, I think that we have to talk about uh, Sugihara as a multinational hero, uh, not only as a Japanese, uh, but uh, also as Lithuanian, as Israeli, as uh, United States of America, and many, many different countries. Thank you. And being the last, uh, I think I have a right to close this uh, roundtable discussion. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency Ambassador, Vice Minister, uh, dear professors, uh, Professor Inaba, who was with us from far, far away. Thank you for students uh, from Lithuania and from Japan and for the all audience. Uh, and uh, I hope we may say that uh, in short time, I hope we will make some common statement and we will ask to join us. But for today, uh, thank you for being with us and good, have a nice evening. Thank you.